Welcome to Mary Immaculate Hospital's Patient's Guide to Spine Surgery. My name is Debbie and I'm your nurse navigator. I want to thank you for choosing Mary Immaculate Hospital to help restore you to a higher quality of living after your spinal surgery. This presentation will help to outline the surgical process from getting ready for surgery all the way through recovering at home. The goal is to provide clear expectations regarding your orthopedic care. You play a key role in ensuring a successful recovery. Our goal is to involve you in your treatment through each step of the process. Your education and compliance will help to ensure a safe and successful surgical outcome. Please feel free to contact me by email or call my office before or after surgery if you have any questions. I've listed my email and my office number here. Education book. All the information presented in this seminar can be found in the Patient's Guide to Spine Surgery. You should have gotten a copy of this book from your surgeon's office when you scheduled spine surgery. If you did not get a copy of this book, once you're finished watching this seminar and it closes out, please look right below where you access the seminar and there will be a place where you can click and download a copy of the book or you can call your surgeon's office and have them mail you a copy of the book. Please read through the book once you're done watching the seminar as there's more information presented in this book than in the seminar. Fill out the survey. When you have completed this seminar, please fill out the survey located on the preoperative education page above this seminar. Once you fill out the survey, a copy of the survey will be emailed to me so that I can let your surgeon know you watch the seminar. If you have any questions, please ask them in the survey. I will send you an email or call you if you don't have email to answer these questions. About your surgery. You'll find general information about spine surgery in the education book. Please speak with your surgeon for more detailed information about your specific surgery. Bon Secours MyChart. Please set up your MyChart account now. You can access all your appointment times, test results, surgery notes, and financial information through the Bon Secours MyChart. To get help setting up your MyChart account if you haven't activated, please call 1-866-385 7060. Pre-anesthesia testing. Once you and your orthopedic surgeon have agreed that surgery is the best option for you, your surgeon's office will send information to our pre-anesthesia testing department regarding your surgical procedure. From here, you will be scheduled for a pre-operative nursing interview. You will receive a phone call from our pre-anesthesia testing staff before your surgery to schedule your nursing interview. During this important nursing interview, you will be asked to share your medical history, surgical history, allergies, including both foods and medications, and your daily medications, including vitamins, herbal supplements, and anything over the counter. That would include topical medications also. Be sure to have the bottles available for this interview so that you can provide the medication name, dosage, and frequency. Your personal medical history will determine what preoperative testing you will need before surgery. While your nursing interview must be scheduled, your medical tests can be completed without an appointment. Please complete these within 30 days of surgery. Common tests include lab work, which is non-fasting, meaning you can eat and drink prior to the lab draw, an EKG, a potential chest x-ray, and or a urinalysis. The results of your testing will be sent to your surgeon and you will be contacted if the test results are abnormal. It is also best to undergo a complete physical examination with your family physician within 30 days of surgery. Your surgeon will let you know if this is a requirement. If you have any high-risk conditions or see a specialty doctor, 
you may also be required to obtain surgical clearance from these physicians, such as a cardiologist and a pulmonologist. During your scheduled nursing interview, you will be instructed on which medications to stop taking, when to stop taking them, and which medications you should continue to take based on your surgeon and anesthesia guidelines. Please make sure you have a piece of paper and a pencil handy during this interview so that you can write down the medications and the instructions that the nurse gives you. You can find examples of some of these medications listed in your education book. Herbal supplements, vitamins, and over-the-counter medications need to be stopped 14 days before surgery. This includes oral and topical medications. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, also known as NSAIDs, are generally requested to be stopped seven days before surgery due to the increased risk of bleeding. Anticoagulants or blood thinning medications are also generally requested to be stopped in the weeks leading up to your surgery. Check with your surgeon and prescribing physic physician regarding when to stop these medications. Please be aware if you do not stop them, your surgery may be postponed. Diabetic medication. Please talk to your prescribing physician about how to manage your diabetic medication before surgery. Often, you will be told to either take half or less of the medication or to stop the medication the night before or the morning of surgery. Your daily routine medications. Again, the PAT nurse will review these medications with you and let you know which ones to stop, when to stop them, and which medications you need to keep taking. Again, please write this information down as it's easy to forget as you wait for surgery. Pain medication. You may continue to take the following pain medication as prescribed to manage your pain as you wait for surgery. However, we recommend you try to cut back on the amount and frequency you take the narcotic so that the narcotic pain medication prescribed to you after surgery will work better. If you see a pain management doctor, please make sure you inform them you are having surgery. If you have any questions about medications before surgery, please call our pre-anesthesia testing nurses at 757 886-6411 or 6300. Get ready for surgery. Start by picking a coach today. What is a coach? A coach is a friend or family member, but should be someone who is willing to help you stay on track as you get ready and recover from surgery. You want this person to be somebody who will cheer you on and encourage you as you recover. Have your coach watch this seminar and read through the education book so they know how to help you stay on track and recover from surgery. Stop smoking. Smoking increases your risk of lung complications during and after surgery. Did you know it also decreases your body's ability to heal itself? And it increases the risk of an infection in your new surgical site. If you aren't ready to stop smoking yet, try to cut back a few weeks before surgery and don't smoke the day before or the morning of surgery. If you would like help to quit smoking, please talk to your primary care provider. Stop alcohol intake, or at least limit your alcohol intake two weeks before surgery to less than one drink a day. After surgery, check with your doctor before resuming alcohol intake. However, if you take narcotic pain medication, muscle relaxers, or anti-anxiety medication, you should not be drinking any alcohol at all. Eat healthy. Eating healthy is an important part to promote healing in your body. Maintaining a healthy diet gives you energy to do the things you need to do. It decreases the risk of an infection. It promotes healing. For diabetics, it helps you to maintain a normal blood sugar. It also helps to prevent heart disease and high blood pressure. 
we recommend you prepare and freeze or purchase small portioned healthy meals for times you may be alone. It's normal not to be hungry after surgery. However, it's still important that you eat small meals frequently throughout the day. If you find you're not as hungry and you're not interested in the foods you have available, we recommend you have some protein supplements available to supplement in for times when you're not as hungry. You can get protein bars, protein powders, or pre-made protein drinks such as Ensure, Boost, and Premium Premier. Keep moving. Do your best to stay as active as possible as you wait for surgery. The more active you are coming into surgery, the better your muscles will be and the easier your recovery will be. If you can't get up and move around, we recommend that you use your front wheeled walker starting now so that you can stay as active as possible. Set up your home for safety. Remove tripping hazards such as throw rugs and long cords. Arrange furniture so that you can easily move about your house with your front wheeled walker. Put night lights in dark areas such as hallways and bathrooms so you don't trip and fall. Put all the items you use on a daily basis in your bathroom and in your kitchen so that you don't have to bend down or reach up as that makes it easier for you to fall after surgery. If you have handrails, please check them and make sure they're secure. If you don't have handrails and you have time, please have handrails installed as this will make it easier for you to get up and down steps. Get these things before surgery. We recommend you get an over-the-counter stool softener, mild laxative, and that you have some Tylenol, also known as acetaminophen, at the house. You need to have some flat gel pack ice that you can freeze with a holder so that you can rotate ice to help with your recovery. You will need a front wheeled walker if you're having back surgery, and you may need one if you're having neck surgery, depending if you feel unsteady on your feet. We recommend if you have a low profile toilet and you're already having trouble getting on and off your toilet, that you go ahead and get a three in one bedside commode. Please know that Mary Immaculate does not provide this medical equipment, so you'll need to call your surgeon's office so that you can get this equipment before you come for surgery. Back brace. Some surgeons require their back patients to purchase a back brace before surgery. Please check with your surgeon if you're not sure to see if you need to have a back brace before you have your surgery. You will bring your back brace with you to the hospital if your surgeon has asked you to get one. After spine surgery. Going home after spine surgery. Please speak with your surgeon before you come for surgery so you know if the plan is for you to discharge home the day of surgery or spend the night in the hospital at Mary Immaculate. If the plan is for you to discharge home the day of surgery, Please make sure that you have someone arranged to stay with you the first 24 hours because of the effects of anesthesia. It's also a good idea to go ahead and make sure you have friends and family arranged to assist you at the house the first couple of days after surgery till you feel safe moving around. If you're spending the night at Mary Immaculate Hospital, please let your family know that they can come and see you after surgery during visiting hours. However, when visiting hours are over, then we do not allow family or friends to spend the night with you. Things to bring with you to the hospital the day of surgery. Again, please bring your back brace if your surgeon has asked you to get one. It's important that you have your back brace with you after surgery as you'll need to wear it in order to get up and down and walk. Please bring your CPAP machine, your glasses and denture case, and your cell phone. When it's time for surgery, we ask that you give your glasses and dentures and your cell phone to your family for safekeeping. Cleaning your skin three nights before surgery. You should get your CHD bathing solution from our registration department when you come for your pre-op testing. 
If you've already come for our pre-op testing or you had your pre-op testing done at a different facility, you can stop by our registration department and pick up your CHG bathing solution. Or you can call our pre-anesthesia testing department at 757-886-6411 or 6300 to find out how to get the solution. Please read through your education book as there's pages describing how you should use the CHG bathing solution. If you happen to be allergic to it, please speak to our pre-anesthesia testing department to find out what you can use instead of the CHG bathing solution. When and where to come for surgery. The day before surgery, you will get a call from your surgeon's office telling you what time to report. Some patients have reported getting automated messages or somebody else calling them and telling them a different time than what their surgeon's office told them. Please disregard those messages and only come at the time your surgeon's office tells you to report. If your surgery is on Monday, you will get a call Friday afternoon. You will check into the surgical pavilion, which is located next to our emergency room department. Day of surgery. Please check in for surgery at the time your surgeon's office instructs you to do so. The pre-op area is where you'll get ready for surgery. You'll take off your clothes, including your underwear. You'll wipe off with some CHG antiseptic wipes. Put on your hospital gown and some non-skid socks. Have your nostrils swabbed with an antiseptic. Have an IV started, IV fluid started, and you'll be given any medications your surgeon would like you to take before surgery. Once you're ready, one family member will be allowed to come and wait with you in the pre-op area until it's time to go to the holding area. In the holding area, you'll meet your anesthesia team. Your anesthesiologist will review your history, including your medications, talk with you about the anesthesia plan for the day, answer your questions, and then have you sign your anesthesia consent. Once it's time for surgery, you'll be taken back to the OR. The length of your surgery is different for every person, so please have that conversation with your surgeon in, before you come so that you know how long your surgery is going to take. Once your surgery is over with, you'll be taken to the PACU, also known as the recovery room, to wake up from surgery. There, they'll control your nausea and your pain. Once you're controlled with nausea and pain and the anesthesiologist says you're safe, then you'll be transferred. If you're going home the day of surgery, then you'll be sent to the Phase two discharge unit where you will be allowed to have one family member or friend come and sit with you as you continue to wake up and recover. You'll need to urinate, get up and walk, and eat a snack. Please make sure that your family brings your back brace with them so we can get you up and get you moving. If the plan is for you to spend the night, then you'll be taken to your inpatient room where your family will be notified where you are and they'll be able to come and see you. Again, if you were told to get a back brace, make sure your family brings that when they come to see you the day of surgery into your inpatient room. We are not able to get you up without that back brace on. Our goal is to get you up and walking as soon as possible after surgery. The sooner you move, the better you're going to feel. You'll be given some food, get up and sit, and once it's time for visiting hours to be over with, your family and friends will be asked to leave and the nursing team will continue to care for you during the night. In the morning, you'll be up in the chair for breakfast and then our therapy team will come and work with you. They will walk with you and show you how to safely take the steps. And then once you clear therapy, your nurse will go over the discharge instructions and we will get you home with your family. Make sure that you know that we, our goal is to get you home by lunchtime. Remember, the more prepared you are, the better your recovery will go. So make sure you set up your home, get your medical equipment ahead of time, and arrange for someone to stay with you for the first couple of days after surgery. If you don't have any family, please reach out to friends and make arrangements for them to assist you. I know it's hard to ask for help, but your friends, I'm sure, are willing to help you. If you don't have anyone that's willing to help you and you have no one that's going to be with you at your house when you go home, then please have this conversation with your surgeon before you come for surgery so they can start to anticipate your needs upon discharge from the hospital. What to expect after surgery? Pain. Please don't expect to be pain-free. Our goal is that you have pain tolerance. 
Pain tolerance means you will have pain, but you can do the things you need to do in order to recover. We will discuss how to manage pain in a future slide. For back pain, you will wake up with soreness, tightness, stiffness. People often describe it as feeling like they got kicked in the back by a horse or got beat up in the back with a baseball bat. Neck pain. You'll have a sore throat. You might feel like you have a lump in your throat when you swallow. Many people complain of neck muscle tightness and soreness and even tightness and soreness down the middle of their back. Support stockings. These are the white hose put on to help promote circulation and prevent swelling. There's instructions on how to manage those in the book. You'll wear them until your surgeon tells you you don't need them anymore. Incentive spirometer or the breathing machine. You will need to do the breathing exercises 10 times an hour to help prevent pneumonia and fever. If you're having neck surgery, please be aware that this is very important for you to do as you will be at higher risk for getting pneumonia because when your throat hurts, you don't tend to take deep enough breaths. Occupational therapy. They will help you with the acti activities of daily living, bathing, dressing, and toileting. If they feel you need any extra equipment to help you do this, they'll provide it for you while you're here at the hospital. Physical therapy. They'll make sure you know how to safely walk, take the steps, wear your back brace, and they may show you some exercises to do at home as you recover. Drains. It's normal to have a drain when you wake up from spine surgery. The drain is used to prevent the accumulation of fluid around your surgical site. The drain will be secured by tape to your body and then it will be attached to your clothing or if you are having neck surgery, the drain will be attached to the neck brace. Our nursing staff will empty it. If you're going home the day of surgery, your nursing staff will show you how to empty the drain. In the education book, there is information on how to manage your drain. The day after you get home, your surgeon will either have you come back to the office to have the drain removed or they'll send a home health nurse out to remove your drain. If you spend the night with us in the hospital, we will continue to manage your drain for you. The morning after surgery, your surgeon will come around and determine if it's safe to pull the drain or not. If the drain is to come out before you go home, our nursing staff will pull the drain out and put a new dressing on your surgical site. If for some reason you're discharged home the day after surgery and you have to keep the drain in place, then the same thing applies. Your surgeon's office will arrange for you to either come to the office the day after you get home or have a nurse come out to your house and remove the drain for you. Again, in the education book, there's information on how to manage and care for your drain. Be safe after back surgery. Moving. Be careful to not bend, twist, or lift anything greater than a half a gallon of milk at your waist. Also for sleeping, we recommend you sleep on your side with pillows between your knees or on your back. You are not allowed to sleep on your stomach. Be safe after neck surgery moving and sleeping. With your head, do slow and gentle up and down motions, slow and gentle yes and no, or side to side motion. When you sleep, the first few days you wanna sleep with your head elevated above your heart in order to make sure that you, the swelling does not accumulate around your neck. Sleeping with your head elevated helps the fluid that could accumulate around your neck to drain downward. Sleep in a recliner as it's easier to get in and out of the recliner and you'll be more comfortable if you're wearing a neck brace. Safe swallowing after surgery. Swallow every 10 minutes in order to promote circulation to your throat, which promotes healing. We recommend you drink cold liquids as this helps to decrease swelling in your throat. It's normal to have a sore throat. You may use an over-the-counter sore throat spray such as Sepacol. In order to minimize movement of your head, we encourage you to drink liquids through a straw. When you're eating, please take small bites and chew the food thoroughly. Swallow once and then swallow again without anything in your throat and then take a sip of liquid and swallow to make sure you clear everything in your throat.
If you start to have some trouble swallowing your saliva, please give your surgeon's office a call. The diet you should be following is called a dental soft diet. That means anything you can chew and make soft is game for you to eat and drink. Some people find it easy to eat softer foods like puddings and oatmeal the first couple of days, but you're not restricted to that. It's whatever feels comfortable to you. Managing sleep after surgery. It's very hard to sleep for eight hours a night after surgery. At night, you're laying there and the pain seems to be worse at night as you're thinking about things and trying to go to sleep. Some ways to help you manage trouble sleeping would be to limit your fluids and your caffeine intake after dinner. We encourage you to stay active throughout the day and evening with short rest periods so that you're able to sleep at night. An hour before you go to bed, stop looking at your cell phone, your iPad, your TV, or your laptop as the blue lights that they emanate stimulate your brain and make it harder to sleep. You can take melatonin or you can take Benadryl if you find you have trouble sleeping. But with the Benadryl, make sure that you don't take it together with your muscle relaxer or your narcotic. You want to spread those medications out by two hours as we don't want you to be so sleepy that you don't breathe normally. During the night, if you find that you're having trouble sleeping, I recommend you get up and move around and then try to lay back down and go to sleep. Managing nausea. People often complain of having an upset stomach after surgery. It can be from anesthesia, the medications you're taking, or it can even be because you're not eating enough throughout the day. Therefore, eat before you take any medication. It's important that you keep food on your stomach, so we encourage you to eat small meals frequently throughout the day. And if you get up in the middle of the night and you want to take something for pain, please make sure that you eat a snack before you take anything. Teas or drinks with ginger and peppermint are helpful to help you with digestion and decreased nausea. Oftentimes, protein supplements are something that you can tolerate even with an upset stomach, so we recommend you have protein powders, bars, or pre-made protein drinks available and supplement in your diet with protein. You can take over-the-counter medications that help with upset stomach, such as your anti-reflux medications. You can take some um, Tums or anything like that. If, you're not med if your nausea persists and you're not able to eat or drink like you need to for healing, please give your surgeon's office a call as they might can call in a prescription for nausea. Managing pain. Again, we expect that you'll have pain after surgery. The goal is for you to have pain tolerance. Some ways to help you manage the pain are deep breathing. We recommend you take a deep breath in for three to five second count, hold it for three to five seconds, then blow it out for three to five seconds. Deep breathing helps to relax your body, distract your brain, and fill up your lungs with oxygen to also help prevent pneumonia. Distraction. Don't sit around and think about the pain. Watch TV, do a crossword puzzle, read a book, get up and move around in your house, do things so that you're not thinking about the pain. Ice. Remember, no heat is allowed on your back or neck at first. You want to use ice. We recommend 20 minutes on every hour as long as you have pain and soreness. Motion. Remember, motion is lotion. Movement helps to loosen up the muscles, to decrease the stiffness, and it also helps with the soreness. So every hour, we recommend you get up and change positions and move around in your house. And then, of course, medication. You'll have medications to help you manage the pain. Medications after surgery. You may be prescribed a muscle relaxer to take at home as needed for muscle cramping and tightness. Side effects of a muscle relaxer are dry mouth, constipation, decreased appetite, upset stomach, making you too sleepy, and please know that it will relax all the muscles in your body. Only take as prescribed. Narcotic pain medication. Narcotic pain medication will be prescribed for you to take as needed for pain. 
Sometimes it's hard to determine the difference between muscle cramping and muscle pain. As you recover from surgery, you'll start to identify the difference and know whether to take a muscle relaxer or a narcotic. Side effects of narcotic are dry mouth, constipation, upset stomach, poor appetite. You can get some nausea and vomiting, especially if you take it on an empty stomach. Please make sure you eat before you take your narcotic. Stool softener or mild laxative. These may not be prescribed for you, but you need to take them after surgery while you're taking a narcotic and a muscle relaxer as they can cause constipation. We recommend you take a stool softener once to twice a day. If your bowels don't move within three days after surgery, we recommend you increase what you're taking. Tylenol slash acetaminophen for pain. This is a non-narcotic way to manage your pain and we will discuss this in the next slide. Tylenol, also known as acetaminophen for pain. As you wait for surgery, you may have been told to stop medications that are helping manage your pain, but you can safely take Tylenol as you wait for surgery. The safest way to take Tylenol is one of two ways. You can take extra strength Tylenol, two pills, three times a day, or Tylenol arthritis, one pill, four times a day. After surgery, we recommend that you stay on a Tylenol schedule if your narcotic does not contain Tylenol. Narcotics that do not contain Tylenol are oxycodone, roxycodone, Dilaudid, also known as hydromorphone, tramadol, also known as Ultram. If your narcotic does contain Tylenol, such as Percocet, Norco, or Vicodin, you want to make sure that if you're supplementing in with some Tylenol that you don't take more than 3,000 milligrams in 24-hour period. But again, Tylenol is very good for muscle soreness and aching and throbbing. So after surgery, we recommend that you take a Tylenol on a schedule if your narcotic does not contain Tylenol. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, also known as NSAIDs, are not allowed to be taken after fusion surgery as it slows the process of healing down. The only thing safe to take over the counter is Tylenol or acetaminophen. Look in your education book for examples and names of NSAIDs so that you're careful not to take those as you recover from fusion surgery. Prevent complications. What you do or don't do after surgery impacts whether you have a complication. Blood clots. Blood clots happen when we're not moving and our blood is not circulating like it normally does. To prevent blood clots, you need to get up and walk short distances every hour you're awake. When you're sitting or lying, it's important that you change positions. Do ankle pumps or ankle circles 10 times an hour to promote circulation all the way to your toes. Constipation. Constipation is caused by anesthesia, medications you're taking after surgery. It can also be impacted by certain vitamins and herbal supplements. The first tip is do not show up for surgery constipated. You need to make sure your bowels move the day before or the morning of surgery. After surgery, to prevent constipation, you need to be on a stool softener or a mild laxative once to twice a day, along with drinking plenty of water. If your bowels do not move within two to three days after surgery, you need to increase the amount of stool softener or laxative that you're taking. Don't make the mistake of thinking because you're not eating as much after surgery that you do not need to move your bowels as often. That's not true. People have real trouble with constipation because they do not make sure their bowels move within the first two to three days after surgery. So please don't let that happen to you. Infection. Please keep your incision clean and dry to prevent infection. You want to bathe your skin off daily because we can get bacteria trapped on our skin, which can increase the risk of an infection if we're not bathing off daily. I know you don't feel like it, but it's very important that you clean your skin daily. Wash your hands frequently. Again, as we've already talked about, to prevent infection, you need to be eating healthy. And if you're a diabetic, it's critical that you maintain a healthy blood sugar to decrease the chance of an infection. 
If you smoke, again, refrain from smoking as you're recovering from surgery because it does increase the risk of an infection. Pneumonia. Pneumonia happens because we're not up moving around, breaking up stuff that settles in our lungs, leading to pneumonia. To prevent pneumonia, you need to use your incentive spirometer 10 times an hour while you're awake. If you don't have an incentive spirometer, don't panic. You can take a deep breath in, hold it, and cough, and then breathe out 10 times an hour. If you've had neck surgery, it is critical that you pay attention to taking deep breaths and coughing as you are at higher risk for getting pneumonia because you don't like to take deep breaths because your throat hurts after surgery. But the most important thing you can do after surgery to prevent complications is to get up and move, move, move. Remember, motion is lotion. Home health care. Our goal is for you to recover at home, continuing your physical therapy and any other related care in familiar surroundings. Home health services, which may include a physical therapist and a nurse, is ordered by your surgeon before surgery if they think you'll need this. If your surgeon is planning for you to go home the day of surgery, your surgeon's office will have arranged this care before surgery. If your surgeon is planning for you to spend one night in the hospital, our care manager will visit with you to make sure your home health is arranged. Again, thank you for trusting Mary Immaculate for your spine surgery care. We look forward to meeting you and helping you on your road to recovery. Please don't forget, once you close out this seminar, to go back to the top of the education page and fill out the survey. If you have any questions, please make sure to ask them in the survey. Also, make sure you provide me with your email address and a phone or a phone number so that I can reach out to you. Thank you.